Hey everyone, it's Deja with KnittingCrochetEverAfter.com. Today we're doing the cheesy rail stitch pattern. The pattern's below. I'll talk more about the sample after we've done the stitches, but let's get started. So the cheesy rails uses a multiple of three plus two. So however wide you want this, you're gonna times it by three and then add two more. It's a pretty simple repeat once you get it memorized, only four rows, not too bad. The first row that we're gonna do is just some basic knitting through the back loop. We're gonna do that twice. So we're gonna catch that back loop, pull off, do that one more time. Then next, we're gonna purl, and that's our stitch repeat. So it's gonna be knit, just remember to move your yarn before you start your next stitch. So knit one through the back loop, knit two through the back loop, purl one. Again, through the back loop. Purl one, all the way till you get to the last two stitches. And that's not gonna change because you finish with a purl. So you'll just do two more knitting through the back loops. So these last two stitches, I'm just gonna knit through the back loop again. And then we're ready for row two. Two is pretty simple. You're doing one stitch all the way across. You're just gonna be knitting in the back loop. So grab that back loop and get to it. It will change for the fourth row. So this is only on every second row. Remember this is a four row repeat. So once we finish with row two, Row three is gonna be very familiar because it's going to be a repeat of row one. So it is very easy to memorize this stitch pattern. So almost there. So row three, we're repeating what we did with row one. So we're gonna be doing two knits through the back loop and one purl across to those last two stitches and those will be knit two through the back loop if I can catch it on those last two. So purl, knit two through the back loop. If you've never done a knit through the back loop, I have tutorials on that and it almost messed up. Um, so definitely check those out if you need this to go slower so you can learn how to do that. But we're almost ready for row four, the last of our stitch pattern. And it's not too bad either. So we'll turn and head to row four. So for row four, I said it's not bad, but it does have a stitch that's kind of annoying to do. So you'll get really good at it after this. We're going to purl through the back loop. So, normally purl in the front, but this time we gotta go in the back. But how do we get this yarn around here if we're going like this? Well, we're not. We actually have to come from the left of the stitch and come forward. So we're almost twisting the stitch. Then we're gonna finish off that purl and we have to kind of go diagonal to get that loop out of that stitch that we're in and slide off. So again, if you need to turn your work to be able to catch that loop, bring it to the front, lock in that stitch. You'll see as I come through, I'm coming through and around that back loop and then sliding that off. So it might be a new technique for you. It might take a couple rows to get comfortable, but once you get cooking with it, it's not too bad. So the other stitch is gonna be the opposite of kind of what we did on row one and three. We're knitting one. So it's kind of the total opposite. We'll purl two through the back loop. Again, catch that, bring it around and off. Two of those. And then a knit one. So same thing, we're gonna keep doing that across and those last two stitches will be the purl twos through the back loops, so you'll get very, very comfortable with that stitch after a while. Having pointy needles like these lace tip addies 
are very helpful. I've got the link down below to these so you can check them out. They are definitely very, very helpful in catching yarn for pearls through the back loops, especially if you ever do purl two together through the back loop. It's even harder. All right, so there, whoop, I lost it. Hold on. Okay, there we go, finish that row. So we're just repeating those four over and over again, and we end up getting this guy. So it's kind of like almost a chain effect, I wanna say. It looks like it's kind of stepped up. It's got a 3D effect. Definitely. And both sides is pretty interesting. The back side's got kind of a cool look to it too, so you could definitely do it as a reversible fabric for like a scarf. They're not, you know, identical, but they're both very visually appealing, so it would work. This would be great with some self-striping yarn. Um, probably even alternating rows. Every four rows maybe switch to a different color. That would look neat too. But this is our Cheesy Rails. I'm Deja with Knit and Crochet of After .com, and thank you for watching.